Hello everybody, welcome to Sports Federation TV, it's 2017 and uh, well, if you've just joined us and you're new to the world of uh, Sports Federation TV, well it's the Western Cape uh, Sports Federation TV show and we look after as many of the Western Cape Sports Federations as possible, as well as the districts in the Western Cape. My name is JP Nordia, I'm your presenter and uh, well, as we go through the year, you'll of course find out what happens in the world of sport. Uh, we look after the six districts in the um, in the Western Cape area, which is of course the Cape Town area, the Overberg area, the Cape Winans area, the Eden area, the West Coast area, and Central Karoo. And we talk about sports administration, um, sports promotion, and we really create an opportunity for as many of the sports federations as possible, and in some cases for the sports federations who do not have the opportunity or the budget or perhaps the capacity to create their own television shows which might be broadcast either on Cape Town TV or on um, other broadcast platforms. And certainly that's the vast majority of sport in South Africa. Tonight we'll be uh, talking to the folks from the world of sailing. We'll take a look at high performance um, in the, the um, Western Cape area. And many of you don't know that there are a number of high performance academies that is funded through the Department of Cultural Affairs and Sport and the Western Cape Provincial Sports Confederation. And those academies are in the district areas as well as the provincial level and ultimately the athletes from those academies will hopefully go through to the OPEX program at Saskok and then essentially end up at either the world champs or the Olympics and bring some medals back for us. So those are two top categories and then of course uh, we've had a couple of requests for our former um, interview with uh, the president of Saskok, Gideon Sam, who you remember was on show with us um, last year. Anyway, let's move straight into it. We'll start off with sailing and with me on the show right now is uh, Matt and... Um, uh, Gavin Ashwell. Uh, let's start with you, Matt. Welcome to Federation TV. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah. You've been watching a lot of TV. You know how to do these introductions, huh? <laughs> Not really, but sort of, yeah. All right. You got, you, is this your dad with you, Gavin? Yes, he is. No, That's right. Gavin, welcome to Federation TV. This is your first time on, on the show with us. Um, have you guys done this kind of thing before? No, JP, but uh, it's great to be here. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to just uh, informing the, the audience about sailing and uh, and hopefully it'll catch on. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out about it. We've heard about the optimist, but we normally hear about the optimist from guys who do adventure adventure um, uh, sailing. So, Matt, you're going to have to tell us what it's all about in a, in a, in a second or so. Um, Gavin, are you the dad or, or, or the coach or the dad and the coach? We know that you're the dad. I'm definitely the dad, but, uh, yeah, I, I stay out of the coaching role to a large extent. In the early days, I was there just to sort of guide Matt uh, along, the, along his way. Uh, but I firmly believe that uh, I'm not as qualified as a lot of other people. And uh, so I leave that speciality role to others and, and get on and just provide a lot of the support. All right, Matt, let's start with you then. Um, how did you get started in, in sailing? I mean, well, how old are you, by the way? I'm 13. You're 13 and you're already yeah. doing solo sailing? Yeah. All right, how did you start off sailing? It's quite a long story. Um, one day, I think it was December 2012, I was doing a rock climbing course. Right. And I wanted my friend to come join me, but he couldn't because he was doing a sailing course. And then in the end, the rock climbing course was cancelled. And, and you so went then, you went sailing? I went sailing, obviously. All right. And I had a jaw, and he didn't <laughs> have so much of a jaw. And then he stopped, and I just carried on, and I really haven't looked back since. What type then. of boat was the first boat? Can you remember? It was a boat called a Pico, which is a yeah. two man boat, double yeah. up, with a, like a coach, pretty much. And then you get taught on that, and then after a couple of days of sailing on that, then you get moved on to an oppie, which you sail on your own. An oppie? What's an, what's an, what's an oppie? An oppie is basically the short word for an optimist, uh, which is okay. like a small boat that's yeah. a one-man boat, and it's lots and lots of fun, and it's a one design class, which means there's only, it's very, very specific. There are no like, op two oppies that look different. All right, so um, uh, Gavin, let's bring you into this. Um, before we carry on with Matt, we know that he's going overseas for or to go to the world champs and, and, and represent South Africa then. Um, from a sports perspective, sailing, I mean, a lot of people think that sailing is uh, sort of out of the reach. You know, not everybody can go, you can't go down to Sportsman's Warehouse and buy a yacht uh, or, or a sailboat. Um, how, how hard is it to get into the world of sailing? Um, I think there, there are various avenues that you can go to. Um, one of the ways is certainly to join up with one of the sailing schools and do a couple of courses. Um, and then you can basically rent a boat. Um, so, yeah. you know, you don't need to buy a boat right up front and spend a lot of money. Um, so it is certainly a sport that is accessible to a lot of people. Okay. Um, and the clubs do have boats which are accessible to the sailing community. So, 
kind so of that's uh, I mean that's 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 quite that's quite interesting I suppose that you can rent a boat or maybe there's a club with boats that you can use because I, I think a lot of people have that impression that uh, they can't go sailing because you don't you don't have the the gear like you might have to buy a football or rugby togs or squash racket sure it's not the same as you know, just putting a pair of running shoes and going for a run in the forest but uh, and I think once you show sort of a commitment to the sport and a passion for it and you want to pursue it then obviously you want your own boat uh, yeah. so there is a financial commitment at some point so Matt you guys don't have to every week pick up the boat put it on the trailer take it down start the outboard motor and, and any of that we do, um, because I've got my own boat now. My oh, dad, so you have to travel with a boat? Yes, we've got oh. a trailer for it, but it's not too long a drive. Yeah. My dad kindly bought me a boat when I was when I turned 10, and I'm still using that boat, and it's it's a great asset to have. Okay, tell us about the boat. You mentioned this uh, early on to me as well. Tell us about the boat. You call it an optimist. It's an optimist. And, and, and you're alone on the boat? Yes, and it doesn't have a motor. Uh, it uses <laughs> yes, I know. I'll just pull your leg. <laughs> okay. Um, it's got a it's got a sail, and yeah. uh, we basically just use the wind and move with it, and it's really really interesting and loads of fun. At the moment, you're sailing in Sequoia Flay. Sequoia Flay and most all over the peninsula, pretty much. But my home my home club is Sequoia Flay Yacht Club. All right, we've got a couple of pictures here. I think of you on the boat. Let's take a look at this first picture, and you can see it on the screen there. Where, where, where is that you? Yes, that's me. Number um, seventy one. Yeah. That was my entry number for the competition I went to in July uh, 2016. That was in Scotland. In that was Scotland? The British National and Open Championships. Wow, so you've done you've done a fair amount of traveling already. Yeah. All right, there's another picture here, and I'm assuming that's the same uh, same location? Yeah, that is the same location. And there's, there, okay, there's not two of you on the boat. There's a guy behind you. Yeah, I've got no idea who that is. Okay, no, don't worry. You don't need to know. All right, now here's, here's a very funny picture over here. It looks like, I don't know <laughs> what you're doing. Um, but it uh, looks like you're having a sleep, maybe. Uh, no, what's that's hiking. There? That's like the opposite of Is sleeping. Hi hiking? Hiking. You hiking? call it hiking. So uh, yeah. basically, you've got a toe strap in your boat because when the wind is blowing on the sail, and you've got to kind of counteract the force that the wind's putting on the sail to keep the boat flat so right. it doesn't tip over and capsize. So you've got to pretty much lean out the boat to stop it from like. So healing. you're basically kind of just trying to keep the boat so it doesn't f flip over. Tip over, exactly. Do you do that mainly when you take turns or? Uh, you know, like it's only corner. when the wind picks up to the extent that you need to keep it flat. Otherwise, does it help with your speed? It does, yes. Okay, so if you get it flattered, you go faster. Exactly. All right, so that's the idea. Not all the time, but <laughs> most most of the time, yes. All right, uh, we've got a little video insert here as well of, of you, another one and a half minute clip here of you uh, in action. Let's take a look at that. Wow, that's uh, quite fascinating. I, ha I had absolutely, that's of course your coach, Roger Hudson, yes, talking to you there. Part-time coach. I've got a couple of coaches that I like, I like, but him, he's the owner of the Race Ahead Foundation. Yeah. He's been very, very supportive of my overseas travels and him and Asanati Jim, they've been to the Olympics in London and Rio. And yeah, they, as I said, they've been very, very generous with their 
support yeah. of they've been, the They've been on the show a, a couple, couple of times. times. I yeah. do believe, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Gav, um, Gavin, let's let's bring you back into the picture here. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm quite surprised at the method of coaching there. You, you, that must be quite tricky because there's obviously some sort of support boat next to to Matt there, and he's a bit of a distance away from the boat, and the instruction... This is not the kind of thing that you can coach on ground. On, on right, no. Definitely a different way of coaching. Yeah, you're quite right. Um, it's sort of very practical on-the-water coaching, which takes place. Um, Roger's on a, on a rib there, and... Uh, quite far offshore as you saw, yeah. um, sort of trying to get into the wind, you know, there are particular days when the wind will blow further out, out to sea near Robben Island, so you need to go out offshore. Um, but yeah, sort of, that's the style of the coaching and, um, you know, it's practical on the water stuff. Isn't, and, it hard, and isn't it hard to hear the coach? I mean, if the wind's picking up and the boat's getting further away, I'm assuming he's in some sort of motorboat where he can talk to you, but how do you, how do you coordinate things? Yeah, um, he's on a rib. And What's a rub? It's a rubber inflatable boat. So oh, it's right, basically okay. a rubber duck. duck. Exactly. He's on a rubber duck. Wait, <laughs> yes. What's a white rub? A yeah. rub. Yeah, okay. He's on a Sorry, rubber duck. Sorry, we, we all okay. call it rubs okay. in sailing. All right. um, a rub. <laughs> but like one of my other coaches, you try to use the megaphone and yeah. when it got windy, but of course when it got windy, then the waves got bigger and then they got splashed and then it didn't really work because it was wet. Yeah. And so usually they use a whistle, like let's say you want to tack, like yeah. turning the boat, then they would blow a whistle and then you'd know like to tack because you can hear it from further away. And usually they come off the water with like lesser voice than when they went out. So they do shout and usually they stay quite close to you so you can hear them. All right, so now um, let's talk a little bit about your, um, your, your, your travels. You're, you're heading overseas. Yeah. Um, you're on your way to Spain, I believe. Yes. Uh, what, what's, what's happening in Spain? Well, I'm leaving on the 10th of February yeah. and I'm going to a regatta in Palamos, which is on the coast just north of Barcelona. And it's called the 12 Nations Cup. It's a regatta in which many, many European countries are participating. And it's just like a, it's a fun regatta and I'm doing some coaching, pre-regatta coaching with the British team. I'll be staying with the British team. Are you team doing the coaching well. or are they going to be coaching you? They're going to be coaching me. <laughs> All right, just, just, yes. just check. Um, but yeah, the British team, which I met in Logs in Scotland in yeah. July, they I've made good friends with them, and so they've invited me to come and stay with them. Excellent. And so yeah, that's what I'm doing. All right, and you know that you'll be representing South Africa. Pretty much. So you have to be on your best behaviour. Yes. And you have to tweet and Instagram and yeah. all that. Yeah. Do you well, do all that kind of stuff? I've got Instagram. Yes. Okay, you're not allowed to be on Twitter and Facebook yet. No. So, yeah. Only, only later. Yeah. And dad has to watch. Just keep it Absolutely. careful. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how, Gavin, that's an interesting um, sort of touch point there. Um, you know, kids today, they're out there. They're getting exposed to all sorts of things. I mean, you've got to hope that you have good coaches. You've got to hope that the, the coaches are fairly responsible. Um, how do you as a dad manage the balance, the life of work and sport and the high-performance sports child? Yeah, I was going to say, it's, uh, it's a very intense uh, sort of, sport that one is involved in and it does require a huge amount of time and effort and energy yeah. um, so you've got to make sure that the balance is there because you know besides sport there's academics and a whole family life that also goes around it but um, you know I think one of the big things is that for Matt to get great um, exposure to big fleet sailing it's important that he does participate in overseas events yeah because yeah. unfortunately in South Africa we've got small optimist fleets and uh, we just don't have that same level of skill um, so when we do participate in big, big events overseas, we often get blown out the water uh, from a results point of view because we don't have that skill. So, yeah, yeah. so that's the whole purpose behind it, really. Um, you got to get that exposure. You got to get the exposure, you and uh, you know, the, the coaches overseas are top class. Um, yeah. And and yeah, they're very supportive, and and they use modern technology videos uh, to facilitate the coaching. So I used to just think it was about the wind. <laughs> you know, if the wind is blowing, you can just win. Now you're telling me, you know, like all, all sorts. We, we do enjoy the wind in the, in the sport and the arms. So definitely. who's the tough guys out there that you'll be competing against? Well, there are quite a few boats. I think they're going to be about 350 boats in wow. Palamos competing, yeah. which is quite a big fleet. And are there some other guys going from South Africa? No, I'm you're on your South own? African. Yeah. Okay, are you mom and dad going with? No. You're on your own? Yeah. They're going to drop you at the airport and off you go? Yeah. And the boat? You get a boat uh, there? I'm going to charter one there. So you're basically, gonna I'm going to hire one. And you've got someone waiting for you at the airport on the other side? Yes. And then they'll, they're going to be looking after you? Yeah. 
Okay, so you're not going to go backpacking or anything? Okay. No. Because <laughs> yeah, we're going to be watching. We're going to watch. So who the, who the big guys that you that you think are they're going to lead the way at the World Champs? Well, there's a couple of boats from the Dutch team, which I think are going to do very well. The Dutch are always yeah. very good, and I th I do believe a Spaniard is going to win. You think so? I think so. Yeah, well, they're in Spain. I suppose they got home ground advantage. Exactly. It's not really fair, though. Yeah. Do they ever come to South Africa? Uh, well, actually, for the national champs in December, a uh, Spanish guy from, he was 11, he came from Mallorca. And, well, his dad grew up in South Africa, so he came and for holiday, and he raced while he was here in the nationals, and he came third. He did very well. And then, um, later in the year, it's the world champs in Gavin in Thailand. That's correct, yes. So this year in Thailand, um, and yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, lots of preparation involved for that. Of course, um, then it's so. local team, everybody together. Correct, that's right. So there'll be a team from South Africa going across. Um, we've got a selections regatta coming up in April yeah. uh, to select the final team. Um, and yeah, basically the, first, the top five uh, qualify to, to go across the world. So it'll be Matt's first world champs. and If he qualifies. If he qualifies. So you, you know you have to qualify first. Yes. You will compete against everybody to make sure that you're in the mix. To qualify, yeah. Oh, do you, are you mentally ready for it? Um, yeah, we qualify. There's selection regatta in Mossel Bay in April, yeah. and yeah, that's the qualification that I need. One step at a time. Go and win the the world champs now in in um, in Spain. And that's not the world champs. It's not the world champs. What do we call it's it? Twelve Nations Cup. The Twelve Nations. Okay. It's got a name, yeah. All right, and that's um, in uh, Palamos, eh? That's right. All right, Matt. Listen, best of luck for that. Thank you. We, Thanks very much. we know that you're going to be flying the South African flag high. Yes, I will. All right. We're, very, we're obviously very proud of you. Thank young you. young man like yourself that is so proactive. I think you are representing, uh, representing well for the, for the sport in the Western Cape as well as, like I say, South Africa. Thanks. Thank you very Gavin, much. Gavin, it's been a pleasure having you here. Um, pleasure meeting Matt. I think, um, you know, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time and exposure, and yeah, we look forward to, to seeing how it goes. Thank you. Right, folks, the world of sailing, uh, very interesting, and of course, we hope that Matt and, uh, uh, goes out there and represents South Africa to the uh, full extent. Folks, when we come back after the break, we'll be speaking to um, Wayne Waits. He's the general manager of High Performance, WEXA, um, here in um, the Western Cape, Western Cape Sports Academy. He's going to be talking to us a little bit about what WEXA is and of course the different districts and the federations and, and uh, that get involved in the district academies and of course the, the concept is, there is that these athletes get through the district ranks, the provincial ranks and into the national ranks and hopefully go and compete um, in the Olympics or in the um, world championships. All that and more after the break.